Yes, yes, yes. My name is Michael Rappaport. You are now listening to a brand new I Am Rappaport stereo podcast where today we have special guest. He's back. The people wanted it. He wanted it. And I wanted it. My man, Joey Coco Diaz, is back in Sukasa. We're talking all kinds of NBA Old school ABA. We're talking about Louis C.K., that animal Ray Carruth. Remember the name Ray Carruth? The former NFL player played for the Carolina Panthers about 20 years ago. He got arrested for setting up the murder of his girlfriend at the time. He just got out of fucking jail. We're talking about all that and so much more. Joey Coco Diaz is one of the co-stars of the brand new TBS show, The Guest Book. It's back. For season two, I'm also co-starring in an episode. Joey Coco Diaz in the premiere, October 23rd. Um, I'm not giving away anything that uh, hasn't already been put out there. He he sucks a guy off. We're talking about all that and more with my man Joey Coco Diaz on a smash mouth brand new I Am Rappaport Stereo podcast coming up next. All right, the Menlo Club wants to have you styling and profiling, and they want to make it so simple it comes right to your doorstep. Told you about this before. The Menlo Club is dope. For just $60 a month, you get two to three curated items of clothing shipped to you directly to help you build a thorough and well-balanced wardrobe. For a guy like me that has no fashion sense, This is perfect. Girls, yo, if you got a guy, make it easy for them, okay? Menlo Club is dope. The fall is upon us, so you need to keep warm, and you got to look sharp, okay? There's four style profiles, classic, casual, forward, and mixed. I use mixed, okay? A little bit of a mixed style, okay? For the month of October, go to the Menlo Club, T-H-E-M-E-N-L-O club.com. And use the promo code CHAMP, the MenloClub.com. Use the promo code CHAMP and sign up and get a double package for your first month for only 60 bucks. That is double the product for only 60 bucks. My wardrobe is full and fantastic. Members can pause or cancel their membership at any time they see fit. Go to www.themenloclub.com. TheMenloClub.com. Use the promo code CHAMP. Trust me. All right. My name is Michael Rappaport. You are now rocking with the best. This is the I Am Rappaport Stereo Podcast. Smash mouth podcasting at its finest. We are in the mix. Yo, there's so much sports on television right now. I I didn't know what to do with myself. Between uh, the the Laker fight and all the NBA games on Saturday, and then a full slate of week seven of the NFL Sunday, and then NBA games at night, and then Monday night football with a full slate of NBA games on Monday night. I, I Honestly... I've never been one of these people to have the split screen thing or two TVs in one room, but I might have to do that. I'm literally in heaven here. I I don't know what to do with myself. NBA is in full swing. NFL is heading into week eight. Fantasy football season is heading into week eight. We're at the halfway point. It feels like uh, just yesterday we were uh, mock drafting. And uh, duress mock drafting, and then that obviously fell into the uh, the waterboard duress mock drafting. Uh, and lo and behold, boom, two fucking months of NFL uh, has flown by. We're halfway through the NFL season. Week eight is coming up. And the NBA, it's like, I, I thought it was going to be a slow drip, like a slow drip brew. It ain't no slow drip brew. There's games every single night. All the teams are playing. And me personally, I love it. 
I love it all. Uh, at times, I, I do feel a little overwhelmed because I just don't know what to watch. Um, but that's why we have Sports Center and uh, you know Skip and Shannon and Undisputed. Speaking of Skip and Shannon and Undisputed, this Wednesday, the twenty fourth of October. Now these I am Rapport Stereo podcasts, they're timeless. They're evergreen. They last forever. Um, but October 24th, me, me, uh, the Gringo Mandingo, a.k.a. the White Chocolate Tito, a.k.a. the Jake LaMotta of podcasting, and so on and so on. You know all the monikers. Um, uh, Shannon, Shannon Sharp, the great Shannon Sharp, will not uh, be doing the show. And I will be doing a full hour. I'm not doing the whole show, but I will be doing a full hour, just me and Skip Bayless, and I will be talking all kinds of fantastic shit. I am so hyped. I'm even considering wearing a suit and tie out of respect. You know, those guys are suited and booted every day. Usually I just come on there, I wear one of my uh, Menlo shirts that I've gotten uh, from the Menlo Club. But I'm thinking I might go full suited and booted with a tie because I'm so hyped. So if you're around the TV Wednesday morning, you should check out Undisputed because I will be there for a full hour talking NBA, talking NFL, and God knows what else. I'm pumped. The only thing that's tough about doing that show is you got to get up early. Those guys, yo, that, that, that show, that schedule... Skip and Shannon, those early morning shows, that's a grind. I believe, and I don't fact check, and if you never listen to the I Am Rapport Stereo podcast, and I know there's brand new listeners every week, I believe that show starts at 7 a.m. Yes, 7 a.m. Pacific time. So if that show starts at 7 a.m. Pacific time, Skip and Shannon wake up at like 4, 4.30 in the morning. Like, you you, you got to be awake to do that show. You can't just fall out of bed to talk about sports for three hours. Those dudes are on TV for three hours talking all kinds of shit. Uh, and I'm only going to be doing one hour, and I'm already hyped right now, and I'm about 48 hours away. Uh, but if you're around the TV, definitely check me out because it's going to be magical. It's live TV. Anything could happen. Anything can happen. Although I've never gotten in trouble for anything I said on live television. That's a fact. I did say once, and I'm just quoting myself, uh, when I was doing uh, the old Jamel uh, show on ESPN, I did refer to Bill Belichick as a retard. And uh, they got all bent out of shape, as they should. As they should. Um, I didn't know any better. Uh, I was just talking. And I do feel like Bill Belichick... Uh, tries to dumb himself down. Obviously, in this uh, day of political correctness, uh, the uh, retard word uh, doesn't fly with people. Uh, but I've never cursed on live television. I do not plan on cursing uh, on live television. I certainly do not plan on cursing on Undisputed, but I'm pumped. I love that shit. I could curse here, but I can't curse there. See, I can control myself. I'm not an animal. Okay, trust me on this. It, it takes a genius to play a fool. I'll say it again. It takes a genius to play a fool. But uh, like I was saying, I mean, the NBA is, well, two, three, four games in. Uh, the Rajon Rondo spitting incident. Uh, it was very well uh, uh, depicted. Uh, we, we broke it down. Uh, I don't know if you are a premium subscriber of the I Am Rapport Stereo Podcast. If you're not, you should be asking yourself why. Why not? Um, but we had an emergency podcast the other day for the best of the best uh, premium subscribers, and we broke down Spitgate. I consider that to be one of the nastiest, most vulgar, dirtiest things in modern-day sports history. Um, there was that one incident. I believe it was the, the, the Brooklyn Dodgers got into a, a, a fight with the, with the New York Yankees. And somebody hit somebody over the head with a baseball bat. Obviously, that's disgusting and dirty. 
Um, on the emergency podcast, we talked about the Mike Tyson uh, incident and a few other things, but I'm not going to go into it now. I'm not going to reiterate what we did on the emergency podcast on premium. That's why you should have premium, but it was a fantastic emergency. I am Rappaport stereo podcast. That's that's, I'm going to leave it at that. It was fantastic. And I articulated some of the, the illest sucker shit that's ever been done in sports because I said it on the emergency podcast. And I will say this. Uh, what Rondo did was some straight sucker shit. Number one, if you're going to spit, <clears throat> spit. Don't like sneak spit. Number two, why the fuck are you spitting? That's what I, I don't understand. Why, why, why the fuck are you spitting on the dude? Smack him, push him, punch him. But spitting in another man's face, and you know this dude. You know, the NBA guys, they all know each other. They play in all-star games together. They've been on the same teams. There's all these NBA events that we see that we don't see. And you're spitting on them? Nah, that's some sucker ass shit. Uh, later on in the uh, I Am Rapport Stereo podcast coming up uh, 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 very shortly, uh, Joey Coco Diaz, a returning guest of the I Am Rapport Stereo podcast. We're, we're, we're going to talk about spitting. Uh, I believe he he has some some strong theories on spitting, when to spit, when not to spit, uh, but in a basketball game, uh, there's just no, nothing. I, I I can't accept or support uh, spitting on a motherfucker uh, uh, during a basketball game. Rondo was fined, I think, three games. Brandon Ingram, who people are like, you know, acting like he's like, you know, LA's most notorious uh, gangbanger now because of his sucker punch. On Chris Paul again. I don't know why. Why he, he like what he did was was whack. He like he like patty cake pushed James Harden for no reason. Was James Harden talking to you? You like push him. Didn't move him, and then you come back into the the fray and you you throw a a sucker punch that didn't even land. So you see, so you're getting suspended for throwing a, a, a phantom sucker punch. The only person who I think shouldn't be suspended is Chris Paul. He wound up getting two game suspension. Rondo got three games. Ingram got four games. Um, and enough with that. It wasn't even like a big deal. It wasn't even a big fight. It's crazy. Social media have you talking about a little, a little patty cake, uh, a little incident for a week. Um, but uh, we're, we're moving on from that now. I am Rappaport Podcast. The NFL, like I said, full swing. We're heading into week eight. And the Los Angeles Rams are 7 and O. Oh. They're seven and zero. Uh, they're not fucking around. The New England Patriots, AFC East, five and two. The Pittsburgh Steelers somehow, some way, uh, are three and two, three two and one. They had a tie. The Houston Texans, uh, with my man Deshaun Watson, who is my starting fantasy football quarterback, and uh, he he gives me. He, I don't breathe really well watching him. He, he makes me very nervous. They're four and three. They're atop of the AFC South. The Kansas City Chiefs are really uh, the greatest show on turf. Uh, they're six and one. And uh, the Chargers are also AFC West team. They're five and two. The Redskins are somehow, some way, quietly four and two and a sleeper team. Philadelphia Eagles lost. Sorry, suckers. Uh, the Vikings are four and two. Uh, New Orleans Saints are 5-1 and one in the NFC South. And as I said, the Los Angeles Rams are 7-0. and oh. I wonder, I'm not going to check. We don't fact check at the Iron Rapport Stereo Podcast. I wonder if the Kansas City Chiefs play the LA Rams. That would be like basketball game. That would literally be like basketball uh, halftime numbers. It would be like 63-50 to 50, um, if, if those two teams played. I would love to see it. I don't know if that's on the schedule. Um... But I know that would be a shootout uh, of all uh, 2018 shootouts. Now, I am going to answer back on my man's behalf uh, about a week ago, a friend of the I Am Rapport Stereo podcast and a friend of mine, um, and as I said, one of the funniest people, my main man, Nick Taturo was on the I Am Rappaport Stereo podcast as our major league baseball analyst. And he wrongly, wrongly, I know he feels bad, uh, predicted that the 
Houston Astros would kick the shit out of the Boston Red Sox. Um, and we all know I don't give a shit about baseball. I don't follow baseball. I literally probably couldn't name five baseball players in the league today. I probably could now because I watched a couple of Dodgers games. Um, but we all know I'm not a baseball fan. Uh, but it's come down to two teams. It's the Boston Red Sox who beat the Astros, uh, although our guy Nick Turturro predicted and led me to believe that that wouldn't happen. The Boston Red Sox beat the Houston Astros, and the Los Angeles Dodgers beat the Milwaukee Brewers. So here we are. I am left in a conundrum because I want very badly for the Los Angeles Dodgers to beat the shit out of the Boston Red Sox. I fucking can't stand those motherfuckers. I don't know any of the players on their team, okay? It's in my blood. It's in my DNA. I don't follow baseball, but I want nothing but bad things. Not literally. I don't want anything bad to happen with any of these guys in real life, but for the team, I want the Red Sox to fucking lose I hate their Boston snot nose snottiness. I need Manny fucking Machado, okay? And I need Justin Turner to get out there and kick these motherfuckers' ass. Clayton Kershaw with your 300 fucking million dollars. Somehow, some way, I don't know what the odds are, but I will be betting. I will be betting on on the fucking Dodgers to beat the shit out of the Red Sox. Magic Johnson, I'm rooting for you. I'm rooting for the Dodgers. I'm a Yankee fan. I grew up a Yankee fan. When I cared about baseball, we hated the Dodgers. We hated fucking Tommy Lasorda. We hated fucking Steve Garvey. I couldn't stand Steve Garvey and his little butt nose and his cleft chin. I hated that motherfucker. Okay? I loved it when Reggie was knocking home runs, when he hit the three home runs in the one World Series game. Chris Chambliss, Greg Nettles, Willie, Willie Randolph. I knew the whole damn Greg Nettles. I knew the whole fucking lineup. Sparky Lyle, Ron Guidry. I knew the whole thing back in the days, and we hated the Dodgers. But right now, I am fucking with the Dodgers. Shout out to Magic Johnson. He's got the Lakers rocking and rolling. And he's got the Dodgers rocking and rolling. Yes, Magic Johnson is very much a part of the Dodgers' success. Fuck you, fat fucking Dan Lebitard. Dick Stain Dan Lebitard, the donut king of Florida, you fat fuck you. You tried to shit on Magic Johnson when he got hired by the Lakers. You said, is he qualified to run a team? And I infamously said, is your father, Poppy, qualified to be on TV? Let your father rest. Magic Johnson is more qualified than you and your father to do anything. He's Magic Johnson. You're the beignet bandit. You fuck you. So yes, I'm rooting for Magic. I'm rooting for Clayton Kershaw and Manny Machado with your fucking... Dirty ass plays. I saw you. Talk about sucker shit. He kicked the first baseman of the Brewers' ankle. That was one of the dirtiest plays I've seen in all the sports. And I like dirty play. That was offensive to me. I want nothing more than the Dodgers to beat the shit out of the Red Sox. I don't know if it's going to happen. I don't know how it will happen. But I will be betting that it is going to happen. All right, that's it. Okay. We got a hard body full tank of gas because coming up Joey Diaz is with me on the show okay and we're talking we're talking current events we're talking right now we're talking UFC we're talking the guest book on TBS we're talking about his new special but we're talking current events we're talking right now with the host of his own podcast one of the most popular podcasts in the podcast game the church of what's happening now coming up next My man, Joey Coco Diaz, is rocking with me on the rest of this I Am Rappaport Stereo Podcast. Let's go.
The NBA is back. Oh my goodness. I am so happy. The NBA is back. You couldn't be happier. And I know I couldn't be happier. MyBookie.ag is the place to be for all NBA action. I have said this and I'm going to keep saying this. This is going to be the biggest season in NBA history. Okay? What I didn't expect that this will also be the highest scoring season in NBA history. Mark my words. Bet the overs with me at mybookie.ag. You can place your bets on tonight's games, team win totals, who will take their division or who will take their conference, and who's going to meet in the NBA Finals. Mybookie.ag has it all. Use the promo code RAPAPORT, R-A-P-A-P-O-R-T, for a 100% bonus on your first deposit. Come win with me at mybookie.ag. Also, one of the things I love about mybookie.ag, they are taking bets on random prop things, political things. I inspired this bet. They are taking bets on whether or not Kanye West will be invited back to the White House before 2020. 20. I say hell fucking no. Okay, they got all kinds of great stuff. They got all kinds of NFL and they got all kinds of NBA at mybookie.ag. Make sure you use the promo code Rappaport for a 100% bonus on your first deposit. Check, check, check. Check, 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 check. I love the helicopters in the back. All right, all right, all right, all right. We like the helicopters in the back, and I'm not surprised there's helicopters in the back because guess who's on the podcast? You got the fucking. Are they looking for you, Coco? No, 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 no. You sure? I, I make. I stop at every stop sign on the way here. Because I never had helicopters sign. for any other guest. I'm just letting you know. No, that's how we do it here. This is it. This could be. That's the feds right there, making sure. Mike Joey Rappaport, Coco what's happening? Diaz is back on the I Am Rappaport Stereo Podcast. I got to come on. You know, this is, the, this is the place to be. We uh, we got a lot of things to discuss. You said Monday, Monday. What was your Monday like? What was your what was your day like so far, Monday Coco? mornings, I get up regardless of what time I get in from the podcast. I get up at like 6.30. I talk to the baby. You know, I do my stuff on social media. And then I drive the kid to school. And then I get home and I get ready for kickboxing at 9 a.m. Muay Thai training, like a conditioning class. And how's that balls. going? I've been going there for almost a year now. Pretty steady, almost a year now. It's going to be a year in December. And are you feeling uh, conditioned? Yeah. They, they beat the hell out of you. I, go, I try to go there twice a week. I'm 55. And then from there I go home, I drink a protein shake, and I go to a strength class. After that? After that. On Mondays, I go to a strength class. So what's that, like weights and shit? Just straight up, old school, straight bar, 20 minutes, you're in and out of there. It's not what they usually do. It's on a stopwatch, and it's slow motion. So when you leave there, you think a truck fucking hits you. It's like four or five. Two a day? You're on fucking two a days. That's just on Monday. Two a day on Monday? Then I go to cryo. I freeze. Right afterwards. Three minutes, I freeze. Can you do the three? I can't. I, I do I'm three most, and a half. Are you serious? Fuck yeah. I love it. I put You can music stay in on. there for three and a half? Fuck yeah. Head and everything. I can only do two and a half. Do go for the three. Go for three. Just put on a good song that you like. And what'd move. you what'd you rock to today? Uh Bulldozers and Slaves by Soundgarden. You need something up, right? Up, yeah, you can't you go move. in there and some slow jam you can, shit. No, you gotta move. Like the last time was Madonna burning up for your love. The time before that was getting to the groove. I went to a party with gay people, and I got re-back into Madonna again, you know, because gay people bring you back to Madonna, so I started going to get my, so every time I go in, I play old school Madonna. Right. Uh, what else? Public Enemy, Brothers Gonna Work It right, Out. Right, right. All that stuff I used that move. one time in cryo. I love Brothers Gonna Work It yeah. Out. Yeah. That, that is, that, uh, that's fear of a black planet. That's just, but the reason why I'm here was yesterday, you just fucked my world up, because I, I don't know if you know this, or a lot of people don't know this. My first failure was basketball. Right. But, I mean, I was all in. All in. I used to write the coaches in high school to Bill Foster and, and Dean Smith and, you know, and tell them I'm a bad motherfucker. 
come see me. And you really would, wanted to, like, you had you had hoop dreams for hoop real. Hoop dreams. And my freshman year, the coach just didn't like me, and it broke my heart. But the summer that, you know, I would sit against the wall and ride my bike, I would take 300 shots at the, pro I would go to the projects on 39th Street and take 300 jump shots at 8 in the morning and then put the ball on my 10 speed and go to Gilmore School in Union City, and that's where all the hoops is, where there's one dude named Dracula. Like, he could just fucking hoop to death. He would go over to the Rucker League uh. and then play with us over there. I was into it, but I'll never forget going into the eighth grade, and it was opening night, NBA basketball. There was no ESPN. Everything was sports phone. You know, everything was sports phone. If you bet, you had to call... Every 10 minutes, you had to put 35 cents right. into a phone and wait for your fucking score. And if not, you had to wait for the news that night or the news in the morning. And even that, that was... If it that wasn't happened, up to speed. So that night, it happened in Milwaukee. What, they what were, Break the incident down. And the incident was they went back. Ken Benson, All-American out of Indiana at the time. I even think he went to the Olympic team. I'm not sure. Check the fact on that. Ken There's no Benson, fact checks here. Ken Benson was a white dude, tough dude, you know, but he went in, and his opening night was against the Lakers in Milwaukee. And um, there was a, some transaction that you really don't see, but it hurt Jabbar. He either threw a hand at him and it hit his kidney. I think it was an elbow. Like an elbow, he hit him. You don't really see it. And all of a sudden, Jabbar went, bent over, took a breath, Got back, pushed him, and just punched him in the fucking head. And I had almost died. Like, I, I just died. And But the year before, what was going on, in, the NBA was wild. When the NBA merged with the ABA, that year was wild. And in the playoffs that year, the Portland Trailblazers were playing the Sixers. And in game four or five, Daryl Dawkins, who rests his his soul, nicest guy in the world. I ended up doing blow with him years later. He would snort coke from on top of a refrigerator. That's how tall he was, six foot eleven, out in Sea Caucus, New Jersey. And uh, he was just buck wild. He was the third guy to get. First, it was Bill Willoughby, then Moses Malone, then it was him to get drafted at that time, straight from co uh, high school to college. Moses goes up for a rebound against Bobby Gross. Bobby Gross was half his size, you know, and, and he just fucking manhandled, took the ball from Bobby Gross and threw him down to it. And then they both got up, and Daryl Dawkins was just a wild dude from Florida. some part of Florida. They, they grew up without shoes and shit. They would wrestle alligators like Khabib. They were just this big, and he had two other brothers that were bigger than him. And all of a sudden, they're holding him back. And this is in the finals. This is in the finals on national television. The fucking NBA finals. NBA Could you finals, imagine that? I, I, I was, and, and, and I loved the Sixers, but I love Bill Walton. <laughs> right. And they uh, had Maurice Lucas. Oh, Maurice Lucas. He was a, t a fucking Calvin, tough guy. Uh, it was a tough guy festival. And all of a sudden, Daryl Dawkins throws a punch at Bobby Gross. But Doug Collins gets in the way, and it hits his own fucking teammate. The Poor Doug Collins. Doug Collins goes down. Did Maurice, you see this game on TV? Were you watching? I'm, I'm watching this. I bet the Sixers. I had the Sixers all the way. I had this kid <laughs> behind me that was a half a white psychic. His name was <laughs> Anthony DeMarco or something, and he would talk very weird. And he kept telling the Sixers and Six. So I bet all my money. I was like in the you fucking seventh grade. You listen to this guy? Grade. Yeah, he was like a fucking half a medium dude. He gave me a couple picks during baseball season. He was solid. So I went to him for the finals. And next thing you know, fucking Maurice Lucas comes from behind and hits Daryl Dawkins. They're in center court, game and whatever. Like fighting, and they're like, fighting. Remember Dawkins was like Dawkins, doing like this shit. And like poor Jack Ramsey, the coach. Right. He was an old man. He was on the floor because Daryl Dawkins' brothers came up from the audience and they were going to throw down. Oh, shit. They showed that on the side. Then they calmed down. Julius calmed down. But then, like I love Bill Walton. He was this white dude from yeah. UCLA. That was a hippie, and he smoked dope. We forget how good he was in his, oh, before those injuries. Oh, my God. But let me tell you something. In game five or six, it didn't show how good he was because Julius Irving said, listen, we're going to lose to you, but I'm going to slam dunk in your face so he, bad. That he, is he fucking, that, fucking grapefruited on his fucking head. That's on one of my head. favorite dunks. And, and why I got mad at Bill Walton, because, because Bill Walton went for the offensive foul. 
If you watch that play. He didn't jump? He jumped. He jumped with him. But Julius had Why a scoop. Why jump? Julius with Doc had a like scoop. this? It was Julius had a scoop that he got away with all those years. If you watch old Julius footage, Julius would go at you. And then when you'd go back with him, he'd take off on you. And that hand would scoop you. Mm. He always got away with that. Why aren't you like, I mean, there's a few of us. I get invited to some of them. You know, when there's basketball documentaries, because I know you love ball. And you talk about it occasionally. You talked about it last time. But, like, have you ever done Bill Simmons' podcast? No. Never done his podcast. Because I don't know anything about today's basketball. But. You know about basketball. Like, you know, like, these stories. And these stories, yeah. Yeah. Like because I, I get invited to these docs and these these things. But, I mean, you're like, you you know the history. I lived it. I, I You don't I fuck with today's it. basketball? No. At I, all? I, I watch the Lakers. I watch the finals. I watch... Um, I like what those kids are doing up in Golden State. You don't you don't miss loving it like you no, used to? No, I can't get involved in it. Really? Because I have so many other things on my plate that I would live for it. Like, I know what it is to be a Nick fan. I know what it is to be a, a net fan with the red, white, and blue ball with Super John Williamson. And, you know, it's so surreal to tell people. And it's it, it would make me feel like I'm telling you something superior. But if I look back in that casket when I'm there with a suit on, I'm going to think about all my nights at the garden. Right. Whether it was ACDC, whether it was Rutgers against North Carolina, Jesus Christ, with Phil Ford on a Saturday afternoon with Mike O'Corrin, an Irish kid out of Jersey City, New Jersey. You were there. James Bailey from right. Rutgers who was fucking slam dunking on everybody, you know, to the NIT. The, right. I don't know how many St. John games I went to with guys like you that would go, I got an extra ticket. How many Nick games did I go to and watch Bernard King go off? Like I would leave there going, what the fuck did I just see? You know, I went to Christmas Day, sixes against the Knicks, Julius Irving. I cannot tell you the memories I have. Right. Every time I walk past that place, I stop and I take like a breath and I go, I was there for so many. That's cool. They, was, they meant so much to me at the time. Like... And now the American family cannot afford to go to a fucking Laker game. It destroys it's my so insides. It's so fucking expensive. It destroys my insides. The like, hot dogs, the sodas, the parking, the you know. seats. Listen, I took the number one, the number one. You, you went, when we were kids, it was 5 30. I swear to God, it would be quarter to six. And I go, rap, I got 22 bucks. You got any money? Yeah, man. <laughs> I got 10. Let's take the train into the city. The train was a token. 35 cents or something. I would take the bus from Jersey. Me and a buddy would get an eight pack of beer and fucking split four beers to give you a little buzz. And we'd smoke a joint walking from Port Authority to the Nick game. I can't tell you how many times we went in there with eight dollar tickets and snuck down to the fifteen dollar ticket and nobody bothered it's you. It's tough now. And you walked out of there at nine thirty at night. You were back home by 10, 15. You went to your neighborhood bar. You had two drinks, three drinks. Yeah. And you went home. When did you, like, uh, stop? Like, because I, I honestly, when you, like, when you say that, I know how much you know basketball and love, you know, basketball from a certain era, but, like, when did you kind of just, was it, was it baby? Okay, but no. And then I moved. Prison? I left. No, I left New York in 83. And I still had the bug. So... Uh, December 29th, 1983, me and three other guys chartered a plane from Aspen to Denver. I was living in Aspen at the time. And you could charter a plane for 250 What the fuck were you doing in Aspen? Just, just trying to live my life right. at 19, trying right. to find what the fuck I wanted to do. And we chartered a plane to watch the Sixers play against the Denver Nuggets with Dan Essel and the oh, whole thing. Oh, shit. And Alex we, English. Alex English. Was Kiki playing? Kiki Vandaway? For the Knicks? No, for, for Denver at that time. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. But they had, an, and Dan had slide his fucking teeth and out. And then it was funny because I moved to, I lived in Aspen, and I moved to Boulder, and I moved, and I dated a Boulder girl. And she knew the Gondrasics the way I talked to you. So I met the coke fiend first. 
and we did a couple bumps from time to time. I, he was crazy. The young one was crazy. For Glenn Gondrasic from the from the Knicks? No, that was not, though he was older. But but the, she knew the whole. Yeah, the Gondrasics were well known. In Boulder, the calls were well known. Kevin Call right. was an offensive lineman out of Baltimore that covered Gastineau. Right. And would always do a really good job. And his father run, ran the Roach Coach. So I would get cigarettes sent out from New York to Boulder, hot cigarettes, and uh -huh. sell them to him. Uh -huh. So I became friends with Kevin Call's dad. And at that time, you know who else was big in Boulder? Harry Connick Jr.'s wife. Who's that? Fucking, she was a gigantic Victoria's Secret model. Then? In, 19, in, the, in the 80s, if you opened up Victoria's Secret. Harry Connick's wife now? Yes. She's a model? Model. And guess what she was doing? Her and her father had a real estate company. So they were buying up all the Boulder then in the 80s. They uh. were buying up Boulder. So she set for life. She was very smart. So all these people were out of Boulder. But I knew the Ganja, younger Ganja Zek played for Phoenix uh -huh. with Walter Davis, right. the Greyhound. Right. But they were down there snorting fucking kilos down there. So he, the, he while they played, while right? They were the playing, NBA was fucking nuts. The NBA was nuts. Why? Those years, they carried out, remember, the ABA. Before Jordan, like yeah. before Magic, Larry, and, and then Jordan. They calmed it down a little bit. But you got to remember, the ABA was just, and you hate to say it, it was just... Five, ten black guys going crazy on yeah. the team. And then the franchises started folding. The Miami Floridians, all these teams started folding. And then they had like six teams left. And they went down to four. I think it was like San Antonio. Yeah. The Nets. I forget the four that made it into the NBA. But they brought that little... Seattle had this, this guy... Named Gus Williams, yep. the wizard Ray Williams out of brother the Bronx. from the Bronx, right? Fucking awesome. But the guy that impressed me the most on that team was the sixth man. His name was Downtown Freddie Brown. He was built the way I was right now. No cardio, no athletic ability. No strength class. No strength. He sat at the end of the bench, and he had a brown bag with a beer. And Are you he, serious? Oh, my God. In the 70s, it's well known. That's fucking He was one funny. of those type of brothers. Like, right. In my contract. I don't drink no motherfucking Gatorade. I drink beer and shit. You're lucky I'm putting it in a brown so bag. So he would, in those in the, in the, in the mid-70s, Seattle made a run for it in the NBA, and they went to the finals, I think against the Washington Bullets. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. but It was the Bullets. Downtown Freddie Brown was brilliant because the coach would say, like there would be four minutes left before halftime, and Seattle was down six points. And he would go, yo, let's go. And he would, like, take off his thing and go up to the coach and go, coach, you know I ain't playing no motherfucking D. Like, this ain't about D. And he would get the ball and pop, like, a 30, another 30, another 30. This is way before, hey. before three-point shot. He was popping 30s. with No, he wouldn't even run back on defense. Like, he, it was well known. Like, just rock. He would shoot four times. Be up by two at the half, and that was it. He'd go back to drinking his little brown beer. What did you What did you think? Because you don't follow as much, but you saw this whole thing the, the other night with Rondo, CP3, and the spitting. Did you see this? Yeah, I caught pieces of it. Well, I mean, spitting in a fight. Like, you can't spit on a motherfucker. It made me think of, like, to me, in my opinion, like, this is, like, historically, it's not a big deal, but it's like, this will go down as one of these iconic, dirty moments. Where's Rondo from originally? He's from Kentucky. Okay, so that, that's weird right there, but I'm a New York City guy. In life, when you want to mess with people, you have to throw their balance off. In the last 10 years, there's been two situations where before you could put your hand up, I'll spit in your fucking face. And these people do not know how to handle it. One guy spit in his face because he was a producer. He was a piece of shit out you of here. You spit in his face? Oh, fuck yeah. And we got into an argument at a wake. At a wake, I, I, I said, why are you here? You shouldn't. Cubans don't fuck around at wakes. Cubans are a little less low class than the Irish at wakes. They don't bring beer and shit. They start calling motherfuckers out. Michael Rappaport, he never liked you and you never liked him. Get the fuck out of here. So I called them out of the wake, and it came out in the L.A. Times. Oh, okay. And then I was doing comedy at the Ice House, and he was supposed to come up there, so they called me, and they said, we hope there's not a problem. And while I was walking by, the guy was saying, 
please don't let that be a problem. He goes, it's not up to him. It's up to that piece of shit. And I went up to him. I go, you want a problem? And he put his guard down. And I just spit in his face. Did you? He didn't did even you like see it coming. <gasps> yeah, right in their face. Twice I've done it in the last like five years, and it throws people off completely. <laughs> By the time they go to throw a hand, they don't know. And then they start spit. And the funny thing was, Dude, I did spit he spit back at you? He threw a couple punches at me. I was already gone. I, I'm a master of walking back to the car. You know, because people always go, what happened? A guy got shot. What did you see? Some lady saw a guy running. Ah, you never run. You walk like nothing. You walk like you're fucking Bridget Bardot. Right. Like nothing happened. You get in your car and you leave. So I get in my car. You walk out of there like you own the joint. Yeah, like I own the joint. I hit the 134. <laughs> and Felipe Esparza, the guy who won last comic standing, uh -huh. my phone rings and it's Felipe. He goes, fool, I'm up here at the ice house. The police are here with uh, CSI. They're scraping the spit off his face to get the DNA. It was a joke. It was a joke. He never came back to a comedy club again. He got out of the producer business. Every once in a while, got to spit on somebody. Well, but what did you think of Ron? This, this in the NBA, like they're talking. But also, he didn't spit like you. Like it was kind of like a sneak spit. Like I'm saying, first of all, why you, they all know each other. The thing about like sports and the NBA today, it's not like back in the days where they met on the plane. I mean, they met on the court, they battled it out. Maybe they'd see him at an All Star game. Maybe they, they've all grown up together. There's so many events. The NBA is different. They know each other. For him to spit on Chris Paul, and then also and like think that with the internet, social media, like someone's not going to catch the shit. Crazy. It made, but it made me think of, I want to throw some incidents at you, uh, some of the craziest incidents uh, in sports history. Tyson biting Holyfield. Do you remember where you were when Tyson bit Holyfield? I didn't watch it. I remember hearing about it later. But I just watched the Tyson documentary on a plane last week, and it reminded me of that. And the reason why you didn't see me at Greg Garcia's thing Tuesday is because I got two cats that are brothers, and they sleep together. And they're both 12 or 13. They love each other. But from time to time, one guy moves the other way. And they get into like a little swatting thing. Well, the other night, about 7.30, me and my wife, I'm getting ready to go to Greg Garcia's thing. I had, a, I had two comedy spots that night at the store. I hear this. <laughs> now, every four hours in my house, I got five cats. You got five fucking yeah, cats? so you're going to hear. <laughs> somebody gets pissed off at somebody. So this time we hear, and it's going, and it's going. I go out there, me and my wife, Harry, who's the sweetheart of the house, has his claw in Demi's ear, and Demi's pulling away, and Harry's pulling away, and, and they don't know what to do. It's stuck? Demi's swatting at him, Harry's swatting at him. And it's stuck in his fucking I, earlobe. I, I don't fuck with cats. Oh this my is God. frightening just to I hear had, about. I had to grab Harry while Demi's fucking throwing Did they go 90. at you? They're, they're just swatting at each other. But I, I've been around them so long, I know how to control them. So I scoop Harry up and I go, honey, grab fucking his paw. We throw Demi down. We hold him down. He's fucking making exorcist noises. I don't fuck with cats. All right. Coco. Mm. Nope. Nope. We finally unhook the fucking claw, but the claw stays in the fucking ear. So now I got to put Demi in my bedroom. He's bleeding. I'm about to faint. I'm in shock. This was like a three-minute situation that it just, you know, I got Demi in my fucking room. Harry's broken up. My wife puts the baby in the tub. She has to take Demi to the vet. They want to, it was a nightmare. I don't fuck with cat. They scare me because of shit like that. Oh, and the they, noises and the sounds. Oh, when they get hot at each fuck other. Fuck that, that was, shit. When I came from Cuba, I was petrified of dogs. You know how many times I got bit by dogs? In Cuba? No, here. You know how many times? Do you I, like dogs? I love dogs. You see me with your dog? I love dogs. But I had this fear. The problem I had was once I got bit by the dog in the Bronx, I developed this inner fear. Uh, of course. Dogs would walk past me. And come back and bite me. That's how scareful I was. So I, until I released that fear, uh, then dogs stopped biting me. All right. Holyfield uh, Tyson, uh, you, you talked about the garden. Uh, the, the Rondo spitting thing also conjured up memories to me. I was only nine. You're a couple of years older than me. Do you remember hearing about, it was all over the fucking papers. It's what have literally broken the internet. When the New York Rangers, and I'm not a hockey guy, were playing the Boston Bruins, and that Savage from the Boston Bruins, a few of them, went into the stands 
at the Garden in 79. Started beating up fans and then started beating the cocksucker up with his shoe. I don't remember that. Are you fucking serious? 79 had a rough year. I don't <laughs> remember that. My mother died. My head was somewhere else. You never you never heard about this incident? I, I probably did, but like I said, at that time, that's when I started. That's when I went into a different world. I got you. So 79 was kind of weird. I had gone, first off, I went to a Ranger Islander game in 1978 and at that time I wasn't prepared for what I saw were they fighting and shit they were they were just animals <laughs> they were raider fans before the raiders right even that that certain very bridge and tunnel fucking oh people were throwing beers at each other you know I told somebody a story in 93 I went to the Jets against the Eagles when animals. Randall Cunningham was throwing the ball and some, some poor guy, like, they don't really understand. People do not understand. A guy with a Miami Dolphin jacket got up and walked up the stairs, and people were just saying to him, take it off, take it off. And the guy's like, fuck you. Okay. When that guy went back down the stairs, things started hitting him, and they started hitting his wife. And she took her jacket off, and he's like, fuck you guys. The next guy that throws something is going to have to deal with me. Oh, my God. A barrage of things got thrown at him. Everything. Hot dogs with onions. He's ducking. Then he sat down. He gave him the finger, and they started throwing things again. People in his area were getting up. The guy got up and said, fuck you. And something hit him in the face. Security had to come and pull him out. People were throwing you shit You saw at this? I saw this, and I was in shock. I was in shock. One of the best things I ever saw in a live performance was Aerosmith, 7980. They were done, done. Only the singer was left. Brad Whitford left. The guy in front of me was on heroin. <coughs> and he was smoking a cigarette. And he was nodding. And there was a girl in front of me with a halter top on. And every time he would nod, I'd push her into the girl. And he would burn her back with the <laughs> cigarette. This went on for about eight times. And she kept saying, move away, asshole. And then one time he just nodded, fell, and everybody started kicking him in the concert. Like this poor bastard was getting kicked on, stepped on. They didn't give a fuck. I don't know what happened. I kicked him a few times and I just went away. <laughs> All right, Coco, you have Netflix, The Degenerates, special. What is it? Who's in it? How did it happen? Next Tuesday... I think it's next Tuesday, right? October 30th. October 30th, yeah. If you don't know. The general thing, they contacted me like December. Then they contacted me again in April. I shot at June 4th in Vegas. 30 minutes. Great experience, you know. Um, I'm happy with it, you know, what they did. It's stand-up. I'm proud of what Netflix did. Yeah, yeah. It's a great opportunity, you know. And I'm real happy about it. When I'm happy about t tomorrow night, Greg Garcia. Guest book. I'm, I'm sucking a cock on Greg Garcia's show. Guest book the, season two. Guest book season two. You're sucking a cock. Um, guest book season two. Opening scene, a nice big black cock. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you're sucking a cock. Yeah. And I'm sure that TBS, family friendly as they are, that's the way they want to promote it is... Watch guest book so you could see Joey Coco Diaz suck a cock. So when you were sucking that cock on the guest book, did uh, you read the script? How did you get the part in, in guest book? Uh, how was that presented to you? Because I was, I was minding my own business. You're minding your business. And I get a text message from Greg Garcia. The guy who created a My Name is Earl. Right. Great guy. One of the best guys really in the nice business. Really nice guy. And he says, I have a role for you in the scene where you suck a cock. Mm-hmm. You don't really need to suck a cock, but if you want to, it's up to you. That's let, reverse psychology. Let me know what you want to do. It was like one of the funniest text messages you would ever get. So you didn't have to method act. Right. But he said if you want to. But if you want to, you know, be my guest. So would you feel comfortable uh, uh, sharing whether or not you actually sucked the cock? No, I didn't suck the guy. You cock. didn't? No, 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 no. Because I've heard different things. I'm not, I, like, no, I wasn't no, there no. on set that day, but people have been talking no, about. no, no. You didn't. I grabbed his balls. Okay. I'm a method actor. Okay. The first take, I grabbed his Just balls. Just to get... Yeah. Okay. And then I realized, you know, 
It's the Me Too movement. You can't be grabbing people's balls, whether it's acted or not. He might not be a method actor. Who knows? You know, whatever. Um, You're in the stand-up comedy world deep, 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 deep for years, 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 years. Um, Louis C.K. has been uh, uh, appearing in comedy clubs um, uh, the last you know, month or two. What is your take on it? When will it end? Uh, what are, like, I, you can only speak for yourself, but based on everything you know about what, what Louis did, you might know Louis, you might not. When, when, is, when is it going to not be like, oh, Louis C.K.? Like, when will this end? And what do you think the sentence should be? And, and who has a right to make the sentence if he didn't? Obviously, he did something that was uh, uh, not okay, but he didn't get convicted of a crime. What is your take on the whole thing as of now? Not not like what happened, like as of now. Like when is he allowed to go in a comedy club and it won't be headline news? Oh, Louis C.K. came out of the shadows. First of all, I know Louis, and I have to say he's always been a gentleman to me. I met him a few times, then one night he was writing sketches for Saturday the Entertainer, and he approached me on a Sunday night at the comedy store, and he told me he had a sketch for me, and two days later the phone rang, I got paid, and he was very nice to me, and whenever I saw him, he was always very nice to me. Was I, uh, did I have his phone number and stuff like that? No. Okay. The situation happened at the Aspen Comedy Festival over 10 years ago. It's uh, a very fucking lewd act, you know? But I've been known to take out my dick from time to time, not whack off and shit like that, okay? But it was a lewd act. It was done in front of two women. It got brought to surface. They were denying allegations, whatever. Okay, so now we come to a conclusion that he did it. Uh, we take away his TV show. We punish him. We abolish him. And, and now you have to seek forgiveness. Right. Okay? What, how long is your sentence? It's really up to Louis. what his sentence is. If Louis walks into a club to do a showcase spot and you feel uncomfortable, I think Comedy Cellar will give you your money back and pick up your tab. Oh, okay. Okay. I, I don't know what they're doing. It. I know he's doing spots in Long Island. I went to prison and I was forgiven, but I earned your respect back. Everybody has to earn their respect back. Michael Vick, 15 years ago, 10 years ago, uh, did something with dogs. You have a dog. Yes. This is not the first dog you've had. No. When you see Michael Vick now, how do you feel towards Michael Vick? Mm -hmm. Do you shake his hand? In my world, Michael Vick paid his due to society. He used his thing in a positive way afterward, and we've never had a problem with Michael Vick again. We've never had a problem right. with Michael Vick again. So when does this end with Louie? Like, because it's like... I, you know, and then even like just me saying like at certain point people, well, you know, I get all that. Like, you know, Sarah Silverman was just talking about it. Uh, you, I, I just like, when does it end? You know, um, uh, this football player, you remember this story about Ray Carruth? He's out. He, he got just out got out of play. fucking jail. 17 years. 19. Wow. Dude, real quick, Ray Carruth played for the Carolina Panthers. 20 years ago, he was young, maybe rookie, second-year player. Good player, not a great player, but like a, a player. Um, got a girl pregnant, didn't want her to have the baby, uh, arranged to have her murdered. Consequently, she was murdered while she was like eight and a half months pregnant. He, he arranged to have her murdered. Somehow, some way, God send, the baby... Uh, was delivered and then she passed away. The baby was born with all sorts of uh, uh, problems um, because, for you know, she while she was dying. Um, he came out multiple sclerosis, uh, uh, like you know, brain problems. It's been covered a lot on HBO Real Sports. Um, the grandmother takes care of the baby. Looks just like Ray Carruth. Is he Shocked. healthy today? No, he's in a, like no the kids. The kid is, is a, he's a severely disabled kid. I, I don't know the name of the terms, but he's severely disabled. He's living, you know, and, and if you, you should look, I mean, it's, it's, it's gut-wrenching to watch. If you look up Ray Carruth, um, uh, Real Sports on HBO, they followed him throughout the few years. And now he, he did 19 years for a, a murder, attempted murder, whatever the thing was, and he just got out of jail today. 
I mean, we can't compare this to Louis C.K., but the point is, is that even this piece of shit, this guy's a piece of shit. 19 fucking years, he's out, his son that looks just like him, totally disabled, F fucked up. The kid's fucked up. You know, how does a guy like this get out of jail? I mean, I, we're going off because, we, again, no, we no, can't no, no, compare. No, no, no. It's all the same. It's, I, in I've terms had of this, you pay your debts. I've had same. this conversation with myself. I went to prison. I made a mistake. I paid my due to society. And every day I tried to be a better person. You know, I, I never hid my story. I always let it out there on stage and I talk about it. And it's a form of therapy. But it's over with. That was that, that taught, That's why I didn't listen. I believe in the Me Too movement, but I can't. I cannot, cannot have somebody say that junior year in Massapequa High School, Michael Rappaport grabbed your tit at a fucking Christmas party. I can't live with that. I didn't want that to go through. Mm -hmm. I didn't. I, I, I feel bad for the psychiatrist. Mm -hmm. and she got choked at a party or whatever. But we can't start that coming up. Mm -hmm. Because I know for a fact, you think you changed in the last 10 years? Definitely. You were a complete different person 30 years ago. We all were. So how can I come back at you for something 30 years ago? Anybody who's human knows that you were a complete different person. There's things that you did 30 years ago that you wouldn't dream of doing today. You know, I read an article before I got sentenced in 1988, before I even got in trouble. I read an article about a guy that had gone on a date or something and there was a fist fight and he bit somebody in 1946. And he disappeared and in 1985 he got into a car accident and when he went to the hospital, they found out he was the guy that had bit this guy in 1940-something. It was a tough case to, to, to go after because the guy had moved, raised a family. Mm. He had two kids in college. He had never even gotten a speeding ticket ever again. And a crime, he, he never even got nothing, nothing. He led this life. He was a pastor. He mm. went to church. He volunteered. What do you do with a guy like that? What do you do with a guy like that? So for the last 30 years, you've lived a, a model life. Right. You made a mistake. Right. It's called a mistake. 30 fucking years. I don't know when. I know it happened 15 years ago. With Caruth. With, with, with Lewis. Oh, right. CK. And I know it was exposed two or three years ago. So it's whatever. With social media. That's the thing. There's no. That's the thing. But when he forgives himself. And when he comes to terms of what he did, let him get up on stage. Right, right. You know, we had Iron Man. Who plays Iron Man? Uh, Robert Downey Jr. We forget Robert Downey Jr. Was on a tear. You know, Britney Spears was on a fucking tear. People change. Right. And Iron they Man was on. on a tear at one point. You know, the last time they caught him, he had a Supergirl outfit in the closet or on someone's couch, right? Some, he did something in Palm Springs. Right. He had to travel to snort coke. When you're traveling to snort coke, like when you get in a car and make Rappaport follow me in the back with two eight balls and then drop it off and I'll see you tomorrow and I have to stay, it's because you're so paranoid. Like I remember snorting coke one night and moving from three hotels. <laughs> three different hotels. Why, it bugs you out? I went into a hotel with my girlfriend. We, we did a long, couple lines of coke. And within 20 minutes, we're like, we got to get out of here. The cops know we're here. And then we drove a mile, and we checked into another hotel. And we were there for like two hours this time. This is back in 87 when I was a mess. I'm not the same person right. then. So this is why Ray Carruth. <sighs> That's that, tough, man. And he did it over child support. Like there was something. You got her when pregnant. I yeah, the, he, he didn't I think want, they did a 30 for 30. He, he didn't, he, they, no, they, it was, you saw the real sports 60 minutes. They didn't do a 30 for 30. It's been covered a few times. And ESPN has obviously covered it. I don't know, man. He's out. He just fucking got out. It's a crazy fucking story. I, I, I don't know, I mean, how that's going to play itself out. But when you see the kid, you're going to be like, yo, it looks just fucking like him. And he's, I don't know the term, but... Uh, let's go to lighter, a lighter well, thing. Well, Ray Carruth, listen, whenever you do those type of things, 
remember, there's two types of prison. There's the pr- it's so funny, just to not go off it, but to go off it. There's two types of prison. There's prison when I send you, then there's a mental prison. Okay, yesterday, fucking my favorite movie's been on all week. Which one? The Exorcist. It's been on all week on AMC. And I've been catching 20 minutes here, 20 minutes there, 20 minutes here, 20 minutes there. I was raised Catholic. You know, part of who I am today is because of my Catholic upbringing. They made mistakes. Priests aren't perfect. But as far as the religion's concerned and all this shit. So yesterday I catched a roll with when the priest comes over to help Jackie Gleason's God's uh, son-in-law. Right. You know that in real life. That's Jason whatever's father. That fucking dude uh, is Jackie Gleason's son-in-law, uh-huh. who in turn is the guy that was in the movie Sleepers. Right, right, his right. His father. Oh, shit. A lot of people don't know I that. I didn't know that. that. If I forget the guy we're talking about. He played the undercover cop with Sam Elliott in that movie with the hot chick from uh, Fast Times at Ridgemont yeah, High. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Jason, uh, he used to work out at this gym up here. He's, a lot of people don't know, he's Jackie Gleason's grandson. But his father was the priest in The Exorcist, the guy that played Damien Karras. Uh-huh. And it's so funny that the, the priest comes over, they introduce, but the priest that comes over to do the exorcism has studied exorcism for years. The guy that's his assistant, the grand, the grandson, he's a psychologist, right. psychi- psychiatrist. Yeah. But at the same time, he's a priest. Right. And he walks in and he goes, can I get you a cup of coffee and uh, break down the psychological? And he goes, no, 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 we don't have time. We got to get started right away. And it was like me talking to you before you're going to fight Rocky, what I would say to you. He's like, know that the devil's cunning. Know that the devil attacks your your psychological first. And he works from there. It, it was it was mind boggling that so many things hit me at that point. And then the fucking priest goes, "Do you want me to give you the three stages of whatever?" And the old man goes, "Satan only has one stage." Mm. And my fucking heart stopped. You know, you live in your own prison. Right. When you get out of listen, when you get when you do a crime, and you're in county jail for two months, and you come out, every time you go to Rouse. You think that everybody knows that you just came out of county jail. I can't imagine doing 19 years. And now coming out, facing people, the people he was friends with have moved and gone. You know, uh, I pray for Ray Carruth. I hope he makes it work, you know. But if we forgave Michael Vick and we forgive, we're really good as a country. Yeah. We forgive people in time. Yeah. But you got to prove yourself. And you know what? Once you prove yourself, it goes away. Nobody even brings up our Iron Man's drug problems. Right, nothing. Nobody brings up Britney Spears' drug problems or whatever she had. You know, you just have to fucking... Once we give up on you as a society, then you're done. Um, you, you fuck with UFC hard. You're a fan, right? Yeah, I'm a fan of... 50% of it, I'm a fan. Do you watch it? I watch certain ones, not all of them. Did, well, first of all, what do I got to do? Who, whose balls do I got to suck to get on Joe Rogan's podcast? He's had podiatrists, planters, fucking his gardener, every comedian, every actor, every politician, the guy who fucking does his manicure pedicure. Who do I got to... talk to him What the fuck? Man. Can you tell Joe oh, so I'm I'll a fan? Him I didn't know. I, th- I thought that every, you guys were friends. E- I've, never, I've never even met Joe. Oh, I didn't know But what the... Sure. F- I mean, every fucking body and their cousin and some of their cousin's friends has been on the fucking... Okay, okay. But what did you think? What was your takeaway of Khabib, Conor McGregor, the aftermath? We know what happened in the fight. You, you know, Khabib fucked him up. He was talking a lot of shit, too, Connie. He's a great shit talker. You're a great shit talker. I'm a fantastic shit talker myself. But at the end of the day, uh, this is where the shit talking means anything. It doesn't mean nothing. When you're in that fucking ring and you got to... That's not for shit talking. That's... I didn't bet the fight till the day of. Oh. I didn't bet. I, I bet Tony Ferguson during the week, and I thought Tony Ferguson was a short thing. 
And then I looked at something. I looked at the line, and Conor McGregor was an underdog. And I'm like, that's a sucker's bet. I learned that in 1982 when the Sixers were playing the Nets in Jersey, and I, I, they sucked you in. They were given eight, and I, and I bet the Sixers, and, I got, and, the, and the Nets beat them outright. There's just some lines that you look at for the suckers' bets. And then another friend of mine called me, and he said that he's thinking of taking the under. He goes, the under's great. He goes, I guarantee Khabibi the knocks him out. But I saw the odds for the over. If you put $100 down, you got 350 So everybody was going to bet Connor in the under. Now, you've never seen a bookie with a part-time job. I'm watching the fucking, I'm watching the M M NLB uh, breakdown before Dodger game five. And it's Big Poppy, it's three other guys, I, but Big Poppy's great. I love that Fox hired Big Poppy. I don't know what the fuck he's saying, and I'm Spanish. But he's great. <laughs> His smile is great. All the other guys picked Milwaukee, and he picked the Dodgers. And it's always, you never see a bookie with a part-time job. Vegas doesn't get bigger because people win. Always remember that. All these people that go to, oh, I won 1,100. No, you didn't. No, you didn't. They got you somewhere, you asshole. But it's right there I knew that it was going to be McGregor, it was going to be Connor and the Ova. So that's what I put in. Let's get, if you're going to tell the story, we're going to tell the story correctly, and we're going to piss some people off in the meantime. When you're a UFC fighter, you stay at a fighter's hotel before the fight. And the, whole, the, the UFC gives you, if, 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 if he's the fighter, and me and you and somebody else are his trainers, we get one room. And four men have to sleep together in one room, and I got to smell your feet and listen to your farts. And that guy has to, talking to his dumb fucking stupid wife on the phone about... Bitacon or whatever, you know, <laughs> and all of a sudden Conor McGregor's across the street at the Bellagio. There were just little things across the way that I saw, and I don't know if you've ever been stepped over. It's not a nice fucking feeling. Uh -huh. It's not a nice feeling when you go to the movie and your agent missed something <laughs> and you got a little trailer and everybody else got a big trailer with stereos and right. shit. It's not a good feeling. Right. And the people, and shame on the people that were doing the thing for saving the $20 right. to make you feel like shit. Right. So it all goes back to that. Now we have this situation at the garden where we show the bus pull out, then the bus pulls back in. With the, with the, with the, the people, Brooklyn. With Brooklyn. the Brooklyn Connor throws the thing in. So we got that situation right there. We're taking it into a different animal range. There is Michael Rappaport. I'm going to fuck you up on the third. And there's Joey Diaz. You don't stand a chance, you spick fuck. And not not even in that realm. That would be sick if you called me that. Yeah, like the, it was not even in that realm. Right. Everybody knows that Duran beat Sugar Ray Leonard a week before they fought because they bumped into each other on the street in Toronto. And Ray Leonard had his beautiful wife with him, and she said, Hi, Roberto, this is my wife. And he goes, I'm going to fuck her in the ass. And it fucked Sugar Ray up that... He got it just destroyed him. Right. He lost the fight a week before the fight. That first fight. With Connor, you could see that he was stretching. <laughs> at, at the thing, he was saying things. This poor kid doesn't even understand right. what you're saying. He's just the catching time. the insults and he's the curses. He's just catching, and he's a Muslim. He fucking doesn't fight. He turned down fights during Ramadan. You know, you could tell that, you know, you have to know the animal you're dealing with. I, I love the clip -its. There was two things that happened during that fight that were great. <laughs> Every time he'd be on top, and we'd ask him, why are you not talking now? And then he'd punch him, talk now, punch him, talk now. Why are you not talking now? And then when they got up, there's one part when McGregor looks at him, he goes, it's all business, mate. That's when he knew he lost the fight. It ain't business. Okay, so now we still got the... Now, if you watch the fight over... If you're an intelligent individual and you have a great eye, which I don't have eyes, if you watch the fight, again, did you, did you save it? I watched it twice, yeah. Okay, did you save it? Yes. Watch it again tonight and watch that during the fight, every two minutes, Khabib is looking at Connor and he'll stop what he's doing and look over to the side. I thought he was getting instruction from his corner. That guy was in his ear the whole fucking time. That's, and I, I told Rogan, I go, that's how bad Khabib is. 
Khabib was looking at Connor going, I'm going to fuck you up. And then I'm going to go fuck this guy. Oh, up. that's the, he, the guy. The guy. So watch the fight again. Okay. Watch the, those three rounds from the fucking start. Every minute, Khabib would go back three steps, drop his hands, and look over to the corner. I thought he was getting instructed. <laughs> right. I didn't Rogan catch Rogan had the cans <clears throat> on. So Rogan couldn't hear it. When I saw Rogan, that's the first thing I asked him. Was that happening during the fight? Uh. Was he edging him on? And Rogan looked at me kind of weird. I go, watch the fight. Every couple, 30 seconds, whatever, 45 seconds, he would look over and, and like stare. Like you're next. Like, and I thought he was, he was just thinking, I'm going to fuck this guy up and go over. Let me tell you something. When he jumped the fence, listen, they're using that fucking footage to show Mexicans right now how to jump a fence. Like that they get those new ones that are coming up during Trump. The ones that Trump is starting to stop. Right now they're watching footage of how he jumped the fence with those two security guards. And it goes back to old school. I'm going to fuck you up and then I'm going to go fuck your buddy up. So this is something that the UFC promoted the, the, in their video of them throwing. This has been something that's been widely known. The fighters see it. Everybody has seen it. I'm, I'm sorry if he went out and he hurt somebody or something, but I'm happy it happened because there's some people who fuck around and there's some people who don't fuck around. I don't think Connor even knew the animal he was dealing with. So, because when you get choked that hard, even by a white belt, I go to jiu-jitsu twice a week, your teeth start to jiggle inside your mouth. Like That's why he didn't hear from him for three or four days because his teeth jiggled. It was a bad loss. It was bad what happened afterward. But you have to start respecting people. You know, he was drinking whiskey with him. <coughs> right. I'm, me? Let me tell you where I'm from. Let me tell you where the street I'm from, okay? I'm from North Bergen, New Jersey. And I swear to my daughter's fucking, I swear to my daughter, I swear to everything that's sacred to me. If I was Khabib that night, I would have gone off on Dana White. Why? Because Dana White allowed everything to happen. Mm. This is all you Dana. You mean to build on. And I love Dana as a man. Right, I love right, him. right. I know him personally. If I was Khabib that night, I would have first said, put the fucking belt down, you piece of shit. Don't you dare put that belt around me, number one. And number two... I beat up what you tried to, you've been trying. You're a piece of shit for what you did. Don, you make Don King look like a fucking saint. Uh. You know, give us back our sponsorships. Give us back everything you took from us uh. and stop covering for this fucking guy. Uh. Let him get what's coming to him. I will not give him a rematch. If I do rematch him, I want the same deal he gets. Right. And number two, he's going to fight Tony Ferguson, and I'm going to fight the winner of that. And that's it. It's over, said, and done. I think they go to court tomorrow. Yeah. Tomorrow they yeah. go to court. They get their fines, whatever. Hopefully Khabib, they calmed him down a little bit. And that's it. He controls the shots now. Right. You I want agree. me to fight McGregor? I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I want McGregor money. That's number he one. He should get McGregor money. I want McGregor money. I want every dime McGregor It's like McGregor the Nate Diaz shit. That's they, it. They, it's like, yeah. yo, he, he it's beat over. me once. I beat him once. Like, it's I mean, over. It's over. Your boy has lost three in a row. The Diaz fight, if you watch it over again, and I love Conor McGregor. And I think he's talented, and he's a great salesman. But he's not the only one. And he's good one. at he did. It was little things he did. You can't put one guy above the sport. That's one thing about the NFL. They're like, yo, the NFL's going forward. You're not bigger than the shield. You know, some of the things I agree with some of the NBA, too. It's like, yo, the game's going to go forward. And they're putting Conor, uh, like, it's like UFC Conor McGregor. He doesn't, like, yo, he brings in, you know, the extra Listen, money, but they, you can't put an athlete above the they, sport. They paid a lot of money for the UFC, and they. I never thought the Khabib-Conor fight would even happen because I think that once... They put the Mayweather fight together. That was part of the, like, he, he didn't know who he wanted to fight. And I never thought they would put him and Khabib together. I, there was, it was too much of a risk for the UFC for Khabib to pick him up and break his fucking neck. Yeah. Okay, there was too much of a risk. If he loses, and, like he lost. And he lost. And it, I loved it. 
I loved it. I enjoyed it. His fans, they, they don't know what to do. With, that's what I love. About, like, I love Conor. I respect the shit out of him. He's a tough, tough dude. great tough fucking dude. fighter. Tough dude. But his fans, like, they're like... Like they're like literally like having like orgasmic reactions to him, and I'm like, yo, he ain't all that. I mean, there's still still people that will say that he just laid on him. That's not fighting. Okay, okay. well, they, this is not it's boxing. Okay. This is not boxing. It's he, okay. wait, wait, you, you know, know, and then so when he loses to the boxer, disagree. it's like, and then Nate Diaz choked. He ran. Get, it is what it, he fucking lost. He got his ass kicked, and he got punched in the face. He got. That's what lit him. You know, and listen. And when he when he hit there, him with that right, that was it. It was, was over. There was little signs going up to this. Listen. It's tough. First of all, you cannot take away anything away from Connor because it's tough being on the top. There were two things that even added for me to bet against him. As soon as you put the whiskey bottle down. Yeah. Why does he get to bring up a brand that's, and then the brand is sponsored by the UFC? And number two, I didn't like when he said this simple word. This is the things I look for. They said, are you been training for him? And he goes, well, if you look at McGregor Production Company, so now to put out videos, you have McGregor Production Company. Right. That takes time. That takes time out of your day. Right. You know, having McGregor Production Company, tasting whiskeys, being dead, you know, training. And a couple of months ago, you're throwing a, uh, you know, what would he throw? Like a dolly through a, uh, that was, cr yo, you could kill somebody doing that. He didn't. You can kill, and, and imagine if that was a black fighter. Imagine if it was any black fighter in the UFC that threw a dolly through a bus. It, they'd be, you wouldn't hear from the guy, I don't give a fuck who it is. Imagine that image of Tyrone Woodley or Beast or John Jones who's done crazy shit too, or any black fighter throwing, it and, wouldn't and be the celebrated. UFC, and let me tell you something, the UFC played it very smart. Okay, like Michael Chiesa fought right away. He fucked up. He got beat up. Right. And he shouldn't have fought. He should have held out for $5 million. He got injured during in the thing. He was right? really bleeding. Ray Borg glass went into his eye. The UFC gave him a, a fight right away. That mean because if you fight, you can't get what's coming to you. Right. A man, the new net, the one white girl. Rose. Rose is saying she just can't leave the house, but you fought. I can't get you no money. A real Jew attorney will tell you, listen. You can't fight. You can't Jew see. Jew attorneys are the best, right? I need a fucking, you need to get a Jewish gold chain, a neck brace. I got one in the car. Just in case. Just in case. I got to go somewhere. You got to put the neck brace on. Are you, or, like, I don't have racial things, but Jew lawyers and Jew doctors, they're the I mean, I, I'm open to other doctors. I, I go to doctors all the time. But, like, I always feel like like a Jew doctor grabbed me out of my mother's vagina, Dr. Gribbets. Uh, uh, they just, there's just something, like, they have that smell of gefilte fish. Even the young ones. I like an, a, a Jew doctor. Like, it's just, I don't, like, it's not that I don't like other doctors, but I do like a Jew doctor. Uh, you, Joey? I, I love every nationality. It's so funny. When I was living in Boulder, when I was going to college, like in 90, my best friend was Mohammed Zabib. Uh-huh. And Mohammed Zabib started tutoring me in economics, and we ended up becoming great friends. And then the other guy that was great friends was was a Russian Jewish guy that wore a yarmulke. You know, I've had friends, I don't, I don't care, but, but if you go through Ralph's and you slip on spaghetti sauce that the bottle is open, you gotta go with Machinowitz, Machinowitz, and Machinowitz. If you need a criminal, I, I grew up in a numbers world, in a bolita world, in the Bronx, and all the people that did it were Spanish, and they all had the same attorney. And the attorney's name is Roy DeLuca. And he was a Jew attorney that changed his name to be to have an Italian last name so he wouldn't. And Sam DeLuca, I'm sorry. And Sam DeLuca, I don't know how many times I went in there. I think he's still alive. When I got in trouble, I called him. And he wanted 20 Gs just to get on the plane. Mm. But when I was a kid, you would go into his office. And the Cuban guys, they would make believe we don't speak English. All the bookmakers in those days, we don't speak English. So I would go in there, and he would go, all right, Mr. Rappaport, you translating Coco? Yeah. All right, tell him here's the deal. Listen, you got caught with 100 grand. They got the slips, and they got the tape recordings. They got you for bookmaking in New York. You got a couple options, though. I can get to the judge. For 150000 you get six months probation. Uh -huh. 
For 100,000, you do 90 days and you get six months probation. And for 50,000, you do six months. Uh, tell them this. Did you tell them? Yeah, okay. Let me know what we're going to do. Give me like a week or two and let me know. That's it's like going how, to Gimbal's or something. It was shit. a menu. He had a menu of what your options were according to what you were going to pay. Wow. I mean, he had options. It was, it was, it hurt me growing up because I saw the other side now. But that's it. But even when I got in trouble, the guy I had was Jewish and he was brilliant. He frustrated the fuck out of me because they never tell you their strategy. It's not till they get to court that you. They don't want you to fuck it up somehow. So they do things that they go through this guy that went through this guy. I went through this guy. He was a law clerk for this guy for 10 years. So I contacted him first. To put it back, you know, it's just a brilliant game they play. All right, Joey Coco Diaz, the guest book. You're on episode one of the guest book, premiering yeah. tonight, October 23rd on TBS. Yeah. Funny ass show. The Degenerates premiering on Netflix, streaming The Degenerates. Funny shit, funny comedians, a Great bunch comedians, of guys. Five guys. Shit talking. Brad Williams. Yeah, just talking shit. We shot brand it. We had a material. great um, brand new material. I've been using it now. So now once it comes out, I'll stop using it, right. get rid of it. Is that how it works? Like yeah. when it's like it's kind of done. It's done. Because you, you don't want to go to the club and they're like, we fucking just stream yeah, this. Yeah, we just saw this. Yeah. We didn't come here to see. We could have so stayed at home. I have like 20 minutes I've been writing the last couple of weeks. And once I start in New York on the 8th, even this week in Hilarities, I'll start running it in. The new stuff. The new stuff. Running it in. Running it in there. Taking a knock or two, but running it in. So I'm a little ready for New York. And then I do, you know, on this tour. I'm Where doing are you performing in New York? Gotham, uh, November 8th through the, through the 10th. Oh, a few days. So I'm going to get off the plane, go see Bo Deedle. Uh-huh. I'm going to go see maybe Jim Norton. Uh-huh. And then do, Carol, uh, do Gotham Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. So that's we how we do it, dog. Nice and easy. No drama. I'm home 10 days, and I go on the road for three days. It's Joey Coco Diaz. I am Rapport Stereo Podcast. You know where to find him, Coco. Mad Flavors. The church of everything Joey Coco Diaz. I love you, cocksuckers. Thank you. I don't steer you wrong. I only steer you strong. I want to thank my guest, Joey Coco Diaz, a gentleman and a scholar, a shit talker. Check him out on The Guest Book tonight. It premieres on TBS, season two of The Guest Book. He's in the first episode. It's a great show. It's a funny show. I have a surprise for you next weekend, the 30th. I'm on The Guest Book, and all I'm going to say is put your fucking seatbelt on because you're going to be like, what the fuck? That's all I'm going to say. I can't say anything more about my appearance on the second episode, season two of The Guest Book. Um, Coco Diaz, Netflix special, premiering, The Degenerates. Thank you for rocking with me, Coco. You should check out his podcast, The Church of What's Happening Now. My name is Michael Rappaport, a.k.a. The Gringo Mandingo, a.k.a. The White Chocolatito, a.k.a. The Pusha T of Podcasting. This is the Iron Rapport Stereo Podcast. Miles Jordan, take us out of here with something real nice, something real proper. I'm done.